graph the falling polar curves and find their points of intersection. So just like when we have normal equations in the rectangular coordinate system with x and y's, they can intersect depending on what kind of uh, graphs we have. When we have polar graphs, they can intersect as well. And in some ways, it's actually kind of more likely that they will. If you think about how a lot of these are circular kind of graphs and in the kind of the middle of our coordinate graphing system. Um, so it says graph the following polar curves. So it is helpful to take a look at what their graphs look like. So I put in r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta and r equals 3 into separate r equals like r1 and r2. And um, I did this with Desmos online, but you could do it with your calculator at home as well. And what we see is there are two places on this graph where our curves are intersecting. And so that's what our mission is, is to find those two points. Now, these are not x, y points that we're trying to find. Remember, these are r comma theta points. And so we're going to end up finding um, an angle and an r value that match up to each of these points. Now, to do that, it actually works the same way as it does with normal x, y equations. We need to set these equal to each other to solve and figure out when these will be equal. So I'm going to set 2 plus 2 cosine theta equal to 3, and then I have a fairly normal, fairly simple trig equation to solve. Um, obviously, if you're not really familiar with solving trig equations, this could seem difficult, but all we need to do is get cosine by itself initially. So I'm going to subtract my 2 over to the other side and get 2 cosine theta equals 1. Then I divide both sides by 2 so that I get cosine theta equals 1 half. Now, cosine is a function that's acting on theta, and to get rid of that function, what we need to do is look at our unit circle or draw a triangle or do something to figure out at what angles is cosine one half. So I happen to have a unit circle here that can appear as if from nowhere. And so I'm looking for my x values on the unit circle. Where are they positive one half? Well, that happens at pi over three and at uh, down here at five pi over three. So those are my two angles pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 that give me a cosine of 1 half. Now, because we graphed it, we know that we should be getting two answers. We And it makes sense, like this angle right here to get to this point looks like it's pi over 3. This angle down here looks like it's probably 5 pi over 3. So these are the theta parts of our answer. Now we need to figure out what our values go with these. Now, depending on what our initial equations are, this can be easy or tough. Since we already know that r equals 3, because that's one of our equations, both of these r values have to be 3. Now, if that wasn't the case, if I didn't know r equal was equal to 3, then I would take pi over 3 and plug it into one of my equations and solve and figure out what theta would have to be. And if you're confused about what I mean by that, I will do um, another example where we have to go back and do that. So you can look ahead to that one to see what I mean.